Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I am really excited about this video on a, a recent episode of the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast. Stone Cold Steve Austin sat down at his desk and started recording. And uh, as he does, and one of my favorite things about the show is that he just honestly starts to ramble. And he, he talks about, you know, people writing in questions and giving them answers and when it comes to, you know, guys with podcasts, especially, you know, uh, wrestlers, a lot of guys like to bend the truth. One of the reasons why I like the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast is that Austin will honestly tell it the way that he remembers or if he's thought, if he's asked about something that, that might happen in the future, he tells the truth. He's not going to, you know, mull it around and, and, and kind of think, you know, what's the best answer that I can give that's going to make me look the best if, you know, they ask about a match and it was the drizzling shits, he's going to tell you the truth. That, you know, the match was horrible. Um, he might, you know, pick out that he just wasn't feeling it that night. He had the flu. Somebody was injured. The referee missed the spot. He'll tell you the, the most honest answer that is not, you know, politically, uh, you know, is trying to make him look the best at the time. He, you know, more often than not, he's going to put the blame on him more than he is going to be, you know, put it on somebody else. You know, even when talking about the uh, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg match at WrestleMania 20, he takes a little bit of the blame himself um, for, you know, maybe not doing something in the match to sort of get the crowd more into it. Like, acting like he was going to hit a spot or... Um, you know, bouncing off the ropes, making it look like, you know, he was about to do something and, you know, get the fans out of their funk and more into, you know, this is what's going down and, and let's get into this. This is WrestleMania 20. We got to get on it. But uh, on this episode of the podcast, Stone Cold Steve Austin was mulling around the idea um, whether if he was ever going to have uh, one more match. He says that every time he's involved with something involved in wrestling, whether if that's him showing up at Raw Reunion, whether if that's him showing it up at the uh, Monday Night Raw at Madison Square Garden show, um, people always ask him, you know, is he ever going to have one more match? Can he get through it? Um, you know, when uh, people ask, you know, former superstar Edge, if, if he's ever going to get back into the ring and be able to wrestle a match, he's always able to draw it as... WWE will not clear him because of his neck issues. Um, you know, he would love to wrestle. He thinks he can do it, but there's no way in hell that WWE is going to let him do it. Stone Cold Steve Austin, for the most part, he retired, you know, at a time he didn't have the wellness policy. He didn't have to go get checked out by a doctor. He just knew WrestleMania 19, his body was breaking down. He didn't want to do this anymore. He had made the money that he wanted to, and he thought maybe he could move on into another line of making movies and things like that, and was ready to, to ride off into the sunset. Um, but much like with every wrestling star that's ever been on top of the business, Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, the Macho Man, you know, there's always one more run, much like, you know, Shawn Michaels. We all thought it, it, at uh, SummerSlam 2002, Shawn was coming back to have one more match against Triple H, which then rolled into him wrestling at Survivor Series, him winning the World Heavyweight Championship. And next thing you know, I think he wrestled for six, seven years um, before leaving. Stone Cold Steve Austin, if anybody's ever going to come back, have one more match, and that be it. This is going to be him. You know, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin hasn't had a match anywhere, not even just WWE, since WrestleMania 19. Yeah, he's gotten in the ring. He's handed out some stunners, but he's never really taken a bump. He's never um, done, you know, anything to put himself into jeopardy in the ring. Um, but, you know, people have clamored for it. We've wanted to see Stone Cold versus CM Punk. We've wanted to see Stone Cold uh, versus Brock Lesnar. Um those are definitely matches that I think that would uh, help main event any WrestleMania that is out there. I think as of right now, WWE honestly has the money um, to back anything that Stone Cold Steve Austin would want to do. I did a video about this last year, hyping up, you know, maybe they could do The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 35. It would have made more sense to use Stone Cold Steve Austin on the match that was held uh, at WrestleMania 32 uh, in Texas, because, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin is Texas. He's got the freaking 
tattoo on his lower leg. Um, when you think of Texas, you think of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, and he did come out. He was, you know, after the uh, uh, eight-man tag uh, with uh, the New Day. Well, I guess that was just a six-man tag or whatever it was. But, um, you know, the, the New Day against the, uh, shoot, what was the name of that team? Alberto Del Rio, Wade Barrett, Sheamus, and um, the League of Nations. That's, that's what they were called. Um, you, know, um, you know, they came out there. It was him and Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley. They handed out the Mandible Claw, the, the uh, Stone Cold Stunner, and the Super Kick. But I think, honestly, we're looking for a, a real deal. I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you want to continu continue uh, with the Stone Cold uh, show, which is on after Monday Night Raw, where he's interviewed... Baker Mayfield, he's interviewed Becky Lynch, uh, Sal from Impactful Jokers. Those are all really good episodes. I even watched the one with Rob Riggle, and I'm not the biggest fan of Rob Riggle. He makes me laugh every once in a while on the Fox pregame show, but that was a really good show. Just two dudes hanging out for the day. Um, they blew some stuff up in some tanks. Um, they fried some chicken. They ate some fried chicken. They talked about some stuff. I learned a little bit about Rob Regal, but it was just two dudes hanging out. And for 30 minutes, it kept me entertained on, on TV. It was pretty good stuff. So, um, you know, if USA wants to continue with that, you, you got to start pumping Stone Cold Steve Austin into some storylines. Stone Cold Steve Austin has always said, you know, if they want him to do anything with wrestling, he'll do it. But it has to make sense. Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't want to be that guy, much like Hulk Hogan, that was just showing up on Raw Pimping the uh, you know the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. If he's gonna be there, he knows it's gonna be big. People are gonna have its eyes on it. He doesn't want to water himself down to where it's just oh Stone Cold's gonna be on Raw. He's just gonna go out there, hit a stunner on Vince, which we've seen, seen a thousand times, and then just call it a day. It's not really gonna mean anything. It wants to be like oh shoot, Austin's on Raw. What are we going to do? So, I mean, if you want to capitalize on Stone Cold Steve Austin, I can't think of many guys on the main roster that are everyday wrestlers that it's going to mean something for Stone Cold to come back and have one match. But, you know, if it is at WrestleMania, you do Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. Honestly, one of the biggest matches they could have because, you know, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin had Stone Cold Steve Austin's last match at WrestleMania 19. At that match, we saw The Rock beat Stone Cold Steve Austin for the first time at WrestleMania, they they had three matches. WrestleMania 15, WrestleMania 17, WrestleMania 19. Stone Cold Steve Austin won the first two. The Rock won the last one. Stone Cold would be able to try and get the win back um, that uh, you know he wants to get for wrestling his last match. The Rock would make sense for him to be in that because easily Stone Cold Steve Austin is his biggest rival. As big as a, a, a Hollywood movie star is, as The Rock is... Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin is honestly looked at as the bigger star in professional wrestling. So you would be trying to even the score. Rock would, would even the, the, the count at two matches, the two, um, and be able to say that he is just as much as, as a biggest star as Stone Cold Steve Austin is. You would have to blur the lines. Both of these guys would want to be baby faces. I think that if you could talk him into Rock coming back and being heel for this match, the match is even bigger. You could do Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Triple H, some sort of a um, uh, storyline over the authority, you know, who's in charge of Monday Night Raw, who's in charge of uh, the WWE. Um, it could be something like that. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Shane would even make sense. But to me, honestly, I don't think Shane is looked at, has never been on the same, uh, you know, playing field as Stone Cold Steve Austin. So Stone Cold Steve Austin would have to wipe the floor with him. I think Shane could do some cool bumps in the match, but uh, it'd be hard to find somebody to carry that match, if that makes sense. Uh, and then, of course, the one match everybody's been looking forward to and everybody's been wanting for years, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar. That's the match. It could be short. It could be sweet. Um, you know, Brock could kill the guy in a matter of no time. Stone Cold could take some bumps, but take some bumps that's not going to kill him. The hard thing about that is Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't really have somebody like Deborah. Well, that's a horrible, horrible idea. <laughs> but I mean, like, I was, I was thinking, like, Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't have a manager. He doesn't have somebody like Jim Ross that can walk down to the match with him. And 
take some of the bumps. Like Stone Cold could go in there, get beat up on for a while. Somebody could slide in and they could sort of be a mini Brock versus that guy match for a minute, even if it's like a guy like Jimmy Hart or Bobby Heeman back in the the 80s that would slide in, get beat up on for a few minutes. Stone Cold be able to take a rest, get back in there, uh, finish the rest of the match. And you, you sort of forget about that time period when two guys were fighting that weren't really the the match that you were looking for. But um, I think those are like the three, four matches that I think that would really pay off for WWE. Um, you know, I don't know how much money it would cost. I don't even know if a million dollars is the big deal in wrestling anymore. But, you know, you just slide a million dollars across the table and say, hey, Stone Cold Steve Austin, you want to be a part of WrestleMania 36? I think you can get him.